Hey guys, what we have here is a transfer function right here. That's g of s. We've got r of s as our input, c of s is the output. And what we want to do is we want to convert this transfer function over to state space. All right, that's what we're going to do. Now, if you remember in that last video when we covered the theory behind this, uh, I didn't show you how to actually go from the transfer function to the differential equation. So we're going to do that in this example. That's easier to, sh to just show you with an example. So figured we'd do it here. All right, so what we have here is this transfer function. Remember, a transfer function is output over input. So that means we have C of S over R of S. And we're going to set that equal to this transfer function. So we have 100, put that over S to the fourth, plus 20S cubed, plus 10S squared, plus 7S, plus 100. Now we've got that. Now we're going to use this to get our differential equation. What we're going to do basically is cross multiply. So we have this denominator. We're going to multiply it by C of S. All right, so we have that. Put it by C of S. And then right side, we're going to have 100 times R of S. Like that. Easy enough. Okay, so now we've got this equation. This is essentially the Laplace transform of your equation of motion. Now what we're going to do is basically just do the inverse Laplace of all of these terms. We're going to assume initial conditions are zero. So let's put need differential equation. So let's take the inverse Laplace. And this is easy to do. The exponent on s tells you the order of the derivative. All right, so this is s to the fourth times c of s. So that means we've got the fourth, I'm just going to put a four here, the fourth derivative of c. And then we're going to have plus, we got 20 times s cubed times c of s. So this is cubed, so that means that's the third derivative of c. I'm going to put 20 in here. So we're going to have 20 times the third derivative of c. And then next, we got 10 s squared c of s. This squared indicates second derivative. So we'll have plus 10 c double dot. Then you just keep going. So 7 s, that exponent is 1. So that means we're going to have 7 times c dot. Finally, we have 100 times c of s. That just gives us plus 100 times c. And then it equals 100 times r. All right, so you just work backwards. And this is kind of what you would do. Actually, it's not kind of. It is what you would do if you did um, the impedance method and you needed to get a differential equation. You just kind of work backwards. Now we've got this. Our output is going to be C because that's our dependent variable here. So our system variables, we're going to have x1 equals C. And then we're going to go down until we get to the n minus 1 derivative. Well, we have c to the fourth here, so that means n is 4, so we're going to go to the third derivative, okay? So x2 will be c dot, x3 will be c double dot, and then x4, let's put c3 for the third derivative of c. Now, take the derivative of all of those x1 dot gives you c dot, but c dot is x2. x2 dot is c double dot, but c double dot is represented by x3. x3 dot will be the third derivative of c. Actually, let's just leave it the three notation. And then that is represented by x4. Finally, we get to x4 dot, and that's going to give us the fourth derivative of c. All right, so we got the fourth derivative of c. That's going to take us back up here. We got to solve for this, so let's move all this over, and that's going to give us negative 20. 
we have the third derivative of c, and that's represented by x4. Then we're going to have negative 10. We got c double dot, well, that's x3. We got minus 7c dot, but c dot is x2. We got minus 100. We got c, but that's x1. And then plus 100r. Okay, so now we have that. We're ready to do the matrix form. So the derivative of your state vector goes on the left. And then we get our matrix A. Got the state vector. And then plus matrix B times R, which is our input. And now you just kind of fill in the coefficients. So remember, you're going to have that diagonal of ones until we get to that last row. So notice we're starting out at x2, though, so you're going to have a zero here first. And then one, zero, zero. This over here is going to be zero because there is no r component in that equation. Next, we got x3, so that's zero, zero, one, zero. Over here is zero. Third row. Three zeros, then the one, and a zero in the B matrix. Finally, we pull out all of these coefficients here. And notice I have them written backwards. This is x4, so we need to start over here. We'll have negative 100, negative 7, negative 10, and negative 20. And now this one, we've got 100R, so we need to put 100 right here. Okay, so that part's done. Now you need to write out your output equation. We already know the output is c, and the variable that represents c is x1. That means when we do our equation, we need to pick our coefficients so that we end up with x1. So that means c needs to be 1 with three zeros. Because when you multiply this together, you'll get 1 times x1 and then that's what we want. Okay, so then this right here, this whole thing would be the answer. And that's how you go from a transfer function to state space. Thanks guys, y'all have a great day.